And ladies and gentlemen, we are back with SmackDown. Uh, as usual, we always take our week off. And uh, we did that. It was great and everything. But it's always it always feels good to come back and uh, deal with the aftermath of all that has happened uh, throughout the past month. And before we get into any of that, with me as always is Monday's Jam. So how are you tonight, sir? Well, Brock, as always, phenomenal. That being said, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys are coming up with tonight to showcase, to try to beat what can only be described as the A-Show on Monday night's AEW Dynamite. Well, um... Man, you weren't prepared for that at all. Were you total silence? Mic dropped? I wasn't. I wasn't, because everything that has happened, including last night and uh, two... Two Sundays ago, where once again you Jericho'd me and took the Omni brand world title from me, but in so we're two two shows in a row where we discussed that there's no way I could have possibly Jericho'd you. You Jericho'd me. There was no buildup. The whole Jericho Jerichoing you was the fact that he Gilberged you and then changed the results of something and then won the last thing and then won in a, and won against your guy. There was no buildup for, for for us to have Jericho'd you. In fact, she lost every match she had going up into it. So. I'm afraid your argument is uh, null and valid, my friend. I feel friend. like she played pos possum. She, she, she lost the battle, but she won the war. She sacrificed the weekly show losses. She oh, sacrificed. Come on. It. She lost her AEW Listen, Women's Championship in the match end of the day on our show, showing you that not only is she a fighting champion that's willing to lose stuff, even though she lost, she was still better than all your women. All right, well, as usual, we've been doing this for two years now. Let's discuss last week's episode. Uh, is there any matches you have in... Last night's episode. Yeah, yeah, that... God. Yes, that, sir. Is there any ones that you uh, want to bring up in particular, like how my boys won yet again to become... Well, I mean, yeah, if we do have to bring that one up. We do have to bring up Varsity Blondes uh, winning their number one contenderships back. Yep. They had... Uh, been challenged and did not back away from the challenge but also Sammy doing the same against Daniel Garcia challenged him and got his number one contendership uh, away uh, we can't hold back from talking about the middle match uh, Miro, uh, Matt Seidel, Tony Nese and Kip Saban yep. with Kip Saban getting the pin over Miro his former best friend uh, and of course like the last two matches like we have to talk about the whole card Jay Lethal versus Leo Rush an instant classic between two newly acquired superstars to our brand. And then, of course, Hikaru Shida, unfortunately, losing her women's yeah. champ to uh, uh, to Britt Baker. Britt Baker, the new AEW women's champ, even though Hikaru Shida is still your Omni Wars champ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And again... Three we, bags full. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot happened. A lot lost. A lot gained. Um... Yeah, dude. Stories were written, movies were produced. <laughs> and so what SmackDown is going to start doing is having guest match m matches, much what you would say open match m matches. Uh, and this week, to start us off, Val Venus is in back to uh, uh, extend an open challenge to any non-champion superstar. So uh, The only thing I have to say to that is... Hello, ladies. That's the first thing he said when he walked through walked through the doors was, Hello, ladies. He walked through the locker room going, Hello, ladies. <laughs> and, and Santino's like, You are in the wrong locker room. And Santino's like, No, I am really a girl. Get out. <laughs> and then he's like, Santino's a girl? Yes, of course I'm a girl. What are you talking about? <laughs> Hello. Santina. <laughs> so anyway, maybe we should get back to the actual action of this match. We're seeing that uh, Bailey uh, going one on one against Naomi. Is there any kind of stakes or anything here? Is there any contenderships involved, or is this just an overall general? No, contest? this is just a general match that we really haven't. That I can't. I can't remember the last time we saw these two uh, go one on one with each other. There you go, Bailey. <laughs> Damn. Uh, so, you know, we just threw it together. We were trying to 
uh, we're trying to uh, turn over a new leaf, start something new, and we're going by we're going by uh, the power ratings, and we're gonna stick by it. And with uh, with the new start, we're doing the um, uh, the under half power r rankings. And with uh, Bailey and Naomi being uh, two under under raters, uh, we decided to put them together for the start of this. So this entire this entire match, we are seeing. Um, the underlings, except for when it comes to a championship match, it's always the top contenders. So, uh, yeah, Bailey and Naomi are under the halfway mark when it comes to the power rankings in the women's midcard division. Well, really unfortunate for two uh, premium talents such as Naomi and Bailey to be uh, uh, considered just within their their power rankings rather than their their yes. full established yep. uh, histories from the various brands that they wrestled for right right i mean naomi just hit a perfect uh uh comeback and could she pick up a victory with it no one count quite possible but not quite so like we stated last lit Last night, Kurt Angle and all of now we can add, we we can actually say it. The main event Mafia is going back to uh, TNA. So with those four spots completely op 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 open, and Bailey picks up the victory, moving up in the rankings. And Naomi. Well, I'm telling you, with those four spots open, I am going to be extremely disappointed if we don't soon see some Jimmy Wang Yang. I know, right? We listen, listen. the The offer was extended. We haven't heard things back from him about it, so uh, we're not going to keep uh, our hopes up. Well, we're going to try to keep our hopes up on it, but we're not really confident. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna find a good Jimmy Wang Yang. So uh, hopefully, we do find him and instill him. But uh, as of right now, I feel like with us turning a new leaf, uh, us having uh, X superstars coming in. I feel like uh, with the open ch challenge, we're calling it the weekly open ch challenge. It will never happen on the pay per views. So uh, with with Val Venus in the building, I feel like it's going to be the start of something beautiful. But up next, as Will Smith said, uh, something like a phenomenon. <laughs> exactly. And uh, your boy, so again, we haven't seen these guys in, in a long time. So they're going by a new name, Rock and Roll Society, which is Paul London and Brian Kendrick being led by Heath Slater, uh, taking on the Usos with Tamina in their corner. So we're revamping. Yeah, talk about a missed opportunity, man, because like back in the day, there was the Rock and Roll Express, but mm -hmm. there's no longer any Expresses, but there are Ubers. Why not the rock and roll Uber? Oh my lord! Oh my lord! The rock. That's just in change of name happening. Hey, <laughs> listen, Jamsaw. Listen, L listen, Jamsaw. You are a man of talent when it comes to creative, but uh, uh, not a fan of that one. Not gonna lie to you. Not a fan of that oh, one. Oh come on, man! Not a fan of that R -R one. Are you? Are are you? Are are you? I am. Wow. Come on, Jesus Christ! Think of the chance, man. <laughs> Anyways. And to start us off, Jimmy going one-on-one -on -one with Brian Kendrick. Uh, let's get this right out of the way. What did you think? Which, of course, since since Daniel since Dan Daniel signed with AEW, he had to give up his spot in the leadership of the Dead Poets Society. Um, what did you think when he handed the reins over to Heath to Heath Slater, and Heath like changed like the entire thing? Well, I have to say, like, he seems like an absentee father because we haven't seen uh, the Rock and Roll Ubers. Uh, I hate everything. It's since. <laughs> rock and Roll Ubers. The Ubers of Rock. Oh, Uber Rock. There you go. Uber we haven't rock. seen Uber Rock uh, since, uh, since the handover. So, I mean, I know sometimes it takes a while to rebrand. I mean, in fact, we just rebranded you tonight as Uber Rock. So, <laughs> it just goes to show you that sometimes you got to fight a little while to find your space within that but yep. while they were dead poet society dominant dominant yes. superstars yes. they were winning left right and center daniel bryan was kicking ass so uh we'll have to wait and see if they actually take this tonight if uber 
Rock has what it takes uh, to become the new face of the tag team division here on SmackDown. But the question is just, does Heath have what it takes to lead them into possible championship gold? Well, I mean, that's that's a good question. I mean, he's the one that uh, came up with uh, uh, Rock and Roll Society instead of uh, Uber Rock, which right. is a much better, <laughs> much better idea, I think. But, uh, you know, only time will tell uh, what kind of leadership skills he brings to the table. I mean, we'll see here tonight if he tries to help his guys win. I mean, right here we see a blind tag from Jimmy. Oh. Uh, uh, getting back into the ring against uh, Brian, but say if there's a, a pinning situation, is Heath going to actually try to distract the ref or do anything? Toss in a, a weapon to help his guys? That is the, yes, that is the question. Ooh, Paul Indeed. London. Paul London, there you go. Work the jaw, beautiful. That's what she also did for you. But uh, <laughs> going somewhere... <laughs> Going somewhere totally uh, out of left side, seeing Tamina on the outside managing her cousins uh, as part of uh, Team Tribal. Yes, right. The 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 Society of Samoans over here. <laughs> Oop! There you go. Rebound. Catch him. Nice. Boom. See, that's what I love about these uh, uh, about these games is when they throw them against the ropes and catch them off of the rebound. That's perfect to me. It, when they run into each other every single time, that gets annoying really fast. Yes. No, there should be they, like the whole purpose of that pitching them to the ropes is to do a move. So they should be doing more moves and less of the standoffs. I can understand if it's the big show and you're not a super heavyweight. Right. Right? That, that makes sense to me. But two people of, of equal size or the guy smaller than you, and you do that bounce-off shit, that pisses me off. Yeah. But, I mean, there, there's also little things, too, like in the AI of the not jumping in when it gets to an eight count. Or the tag, or the, the steel cage matches, which is why I haven't had a steel cage match on. Why, if someone's climbing, and he's already halfway up, are you going to start climbing? No. Knock him the fuck off before you try to climb. If he's already halfway there and you start climbing, he's a guarantee to win. Yes. That's something that pisses me off. And that's not something I saw before. When I was doing 2K19 or 2K18, tag team matches, they would do that. They would say, oh, you're climbing. I'm going to pull you off before I try to climb. Not this game. They're like, dude, the purpose is to climb. Yep. Come on. No, the purpose is to win, dumbass. Fucking pull him off and then climb. That's how it should go. Oh, nice, Brian. Catch him, catch him, catch him. No, he reversed Ooh, it. Fireman carry reversal. Yes. Shit. No, scoop slam. Rikishi Ooh, driver. No. Rikishi driver. Oh. Shades of the Samoan content. DDT, beautiful. Taking him right down. Who is One, two... Oh, not even a two count. Who has the best D DDT in, in your opinion? Jeez, that's a hard one because there's a bunch of variations, right? Yeah. Um, I really like I really like the uh, John Moxley's. Uh, oh, the double version. underhook. The double underhook. The he does? Yeah, it's a double a double underhook, but I think he calls it the paradigm shift. Yes. Yep. Yep. Because it's like a DDT, but the guy's also kind of like a. A 60-degree angle? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, like, Mick Foley slash Do Love had a really great uh, DDT. Mm -hmm. um, even The Rock. The Rock had a devastating DDT. Like, he'd run up to you and kick you in the guts, and then, bam, just like, yeah. it was too crisp. Yeah. The Miz has a good, uh, a good one, too. I'm not going to lie to you. The Miz has a lot of good moves in his arsenal. I mean, he has that. He has the uh, the figure four from Ric Flair. He has the uh, uh, final uh, final cut. What is it? No, it's not final cut. What do they call it? And while we were on a rant about that, the Usos once again showing why they don't deserve to be in the bottom rankings. Uh, so con. So congratulations to them. To me, did a good job. Heath, you're going to have to sit down and talk with the Rock and Roll Society. I don't know what you got to do, but uh, you guys need I mean, to go Uber up. Rock. 
You guys need to go up in the rankings, man. You can't stay there. If you want to be champions, it, it seems like you've really degraded the team that uh, that Daniel Bryan really built b- built up. So he's got to he's got to change that up. But uh, up next is uh, like we've said, we're doing the bottom rankings, and if it's not a championship match, it's always the lower cards for this week. And Muhammad Hassan not able to capitalize, become world champion. Uh, he's at the bottom of the rankings, so he's taking on MVP here tonight. Um, well, you finished the goo goo rolling that, sir. Uh, what, what did you think about his losing performance against Kurt this past Sunday? I thought it was quite unfortunate, but at the same time, I mean, it is Kurt Angle he's going up against, you know, like a legend, a, uh, a man who broke, uh, who broke his freaking neck and yep. still competed in the Olympics, who loves milk. You know, the, <laughs> has a son named Jason Jordan, um, is the leader of the main event mafia. Yeah. Uh, that being said, though, uh, as always, phenomenally, I have found the answers to the questions. The skull crushing finale yes. is the Mrs. finishing move. Yes. And uh, also call back to uh, uh, Uber Rock's team. The chant for Uber Rock is you are Uber Rock. You are Uber Rock. <laughs> so again, another gift that I give to you. I expect to see that you probably have a boost in the ratings just because of this. Why you do this uh, to me? <laughs> oh, nice. I call it how I see it. That's all. So, who do you want to win here tonight to boost up the rankings? Um. Well, I mean, I would love to see Muhammad Hassan able to make a comeback. Right. Uh, but I have a feeling MVP is just too hot of an entity at this time mm-hmm. that he's going to come out on top. Right. Oh, nice drop of the knee. Listen, for some reason, for, for me, whenever a, whenever a knee is dropped, like, right near the edge of your ribs, like, not on the center of your back, but, like, on the edge of your body, and it, like, rubs against your, your, your fucking ribs and shit, like, that burns and it hurts, and I feel like that's more, that hurts more than just a knee to um, the um, center of your back. I agree with you there, man. Muhammad, there you go. But MVP needs a win, though, man. Like, like he's been at the bottom for, like, the long... He he was... The only time that he was on top of the SmackDown War... One. Two. No! MVP, and bro! And Hassan taking it away from MVP. Like I was, yeah, MVP, like, the only time he was on top was as part of Better Than Utopians. And ever yes. since that went away... Yeah. He's been uh, fading... I mean, the entire brand there uh, uh, f- f- fizzled away. Uh, Ray left. Um, God, who else was better than Utopia? Ray left. Sheamus. Sheamus Ray. just becoming the uh, European champion. Yeah, Sheamus, Nia Jax, and Maurice. Yep. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, they, they all f- fizzled. They're starting to come back now, but Ray retiring from SmackDown. Uh, Sheamus just winning the European title, Naomi just becoming the uh, women's intercontinental champion, and Maurice is, I mean, she still competes with us, but she's more or less in the corner of the Miz. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with all that being said, uh, we are moving on. As to, always. <laughs> we're moving on to our next match. So earlier tonight, uh, Liv uh, stated in the back in the interview er- area, that, uh, and I quote, Becky hasn't had to work hard for a title defense. Basically saying that everyone that uh, Becky has gone up against is not within the caliber that she considers championship material. So Becky has taken that as a challenge and she has accepted the former women's intercontinental champion. And um, yeah, so we have us a world title match here tonight. Uh, Jam saw Liv Morgan. What's her chances here tonight, and do you think she's going to leave with the title? Well, I kind of thought you were going to go a little bit uh, Seinfeld on me. Go, what's the deal with Liv Morgan? <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I think she has pretty good chances because she's uh, she's a contender. You know, she's been a champ in her own right across several promotions at this point for you. Yep. But Becky Lynch is just. I think a step above, and unfortunately, we'll probably be able to take her down. I would love to see Liv take it. Yes. You know, I'd love to see her run with that opportunity. I just think that she probably is not at the right point in her career to actually 
take advantage of that spot. Right. And I I can agree with that. She's been multiple women's intercontinental champion. She's been uh she's been really stuck in the mid card title with all the brands that I've done. So You're stuck to, in the middle with you. Um so I would love to see her show all the doubters wrong that she is world title uh, material. I definitely think she is of the caliber. It's just a question of is she ready to be that at this point. Right. Oh, there you go. Send her there flying. Is indeed. Oh, that was good. That was nice. That was, uh, what they call it, uh, Platinum. <laughs> platinum Berg. That's it, man. It's like me doing that uh, precious metal platinum. You make a lot of money with that. Oh. Talk about money. Beautiful. Yeah, money can be beautiful when it's spread across a, bread, a bed underneath your lady. Underneath your lady, brother. Oh, Liv. Hello, ladies. <laughs> Liv taken down bad. Uh, yeah, bad. No, no. Beth, Becky. Wow. <laughs> oh. Chewing on my tongue like it's bubble gum. Ooh, you're a poet. You didn't even know it. I knew it. Oh, okay. I'm not humble. <laughs> Ooh, one count. All right, live, live, live. This is world title contention. You need to step live it up. Day. You need to step it up, girl. Like an enziguri to the face. Step that shit up. Yes, sir. Oh, what are you doing? Chewing some gum. <laughs> and I'm all out of uh, shooting bad guys. <laughs> oh, nice. Live. They all oh, oh, break. Going for that uh, leg long, but unfortunately, I'm unable to capitalize too close to the ropes. Nice. Okay, 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 oh, okay, Shane's okay. Jericho. Maybe she's learning from uh, Le Champion. Maybe. Oh, Maybe. Not quite enough to get it done, though. What she needs is to uh, call Gilbert and get him in here to help. <laughs> True. Work the back. There you go. There you go, Liv. There you go, Liv. All right, so what does she need to do against a submission specialist in Becky Lynch? Well, she needs to do what RuPaul said, man, and that's to work. Work it, girl. <laughs> do your thing. But in the squared circle. Ladies and gentlemen, you come for the content, but you stay for the singing. <laughs> One day we'll do a karaoke night. No, we won't. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. If we get enough likes. <laughs> right? I want a thousand likes on this video. Yeah, if we get a thousand likes on this video, we'll do a karaoke night where I get wasted on gin and tonics. There we go. And sing RuPaul. You and Josh will do a duet together. Oh my god. You and Josh drunk. We'll do a duet together. Does Josh drink? I've only ever seen him smoke. Really? I think he drinks. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, soup. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Yes, live, yes, live, yes. Live, 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 live. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Rope break too close to the ropes. That might have saved See, live. you got to keep in mind. you got to be real careful uh, with where you position yourself. That might have saved her, though. That might have saved Liv. No! Are you still trying to post on Facebook that The Heart is not a Christmas movie? I know it's not a Christmas movie. It is a fucking Christmas no, movie. No, it's not. Look at, look at what it's I stated. It's all about Christmas, man. It's like all about saving no. Christmas. No, man. no. John McLean saves Christmas. No, he the, didn't. No. Like, if you look at the... If you ever look online and you're looking for Die Hard and you type in um, Saving Christmas, nope. Die Hard shows up. Yeah, no, no. I'm telling you, Google that shit. Nope, nope. That's a hill yeah. that I will die on. Well, you should, you should die on it because you're a fool. <laughs> <laughs> die Hard is definitely a Christmas movie. No, it's not. He's trying to get home for Christmas, man. No. It's a Christmas movie. No, it's not. It's like Hawkeye. Nice. Did you watch Hawkeye? I did That's not. It's a fucking Christmas show. Just. Oh, maybe that was a. Ooh. Very happy that we were dumbfounded here thinking maybe. Maybe. Liv. Liv. Would somehow take this away, but live. 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 You only live once. Yes! 
Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, live, live. Yes! No, it's not. No, it's not. Get Liv Morgan taking it. Finally. That's what she does. She takes it from Jericho. No, she does not. <laughs> She's his accolade. Yeah. Accolade. That's what we'll call it. So, what do you think, Liv Morgan? I think she's worshipping at the Church of Jericho, and uh, she was blessed with the seed that gave her the, what she needed. Yep, so she might have lost the Intercontinental title, but she gained the World Championship. Wow. And by the way, just because it isn't about Christmas doesn't make it not nope. a Christmas movie. It was released in July. It's not a Christmas yeah, movie. Yeah, but it was. when did it take place? No. When did it take place, nope. Brock? Nope. Did it take place during nope. Christmas? At a Christmas party? Nope. Perhaps? Was it maybe a Christmas party? And, sir, with you going on your rant about Die Hard not being a Christmas movie, we finally have somebody to challenge Val Venus in our, in our first ever uh, throwback match. Uh, so the penis versus the Venus, I get it. But back to the Die Hard conversation, as no, we were no, saying a few no, minutes no, ago, no, uh, when the so, mic happened so, to mysteriously so, cut, so, Die Hard is in fact a Christmas movie because it takes place during Christmas, yeah. just like that Office Party movie with Jason Bateman and uh, and uh, uh, Miller, T.J. Miller, uh, where they were doing an Office Christmas party. And stuff was happening, and they got out of control and got drunk, smashed up the building stuff. Christmas movie, right? Because it takes place during Christmas. It's not about feel-good Christmas or being happy people and stuff like that. It's like Home Alone. Kind of a Christmas movie. Because he was home all alone during the holiday season. All right, moving on. Am, am I wrong? With Is the, Home Alone not a Christmas movie? With The Miz, by default, <laughs> being former European... This is what happens, folks. When he doesn't want to admit when he's wrong... He just changes the subject. And I am more like Roddy Piper. Just when you think I have all the answers, I change the questions. Oh, nice, Val Venus. So, with The Miz being former, by default, European champion, um, he's angry. He's The, the former, by default? Yeah, because uh, Sheamus uh, changed it. Well, William R R Regal changed it to the European... So, I guess we could say former million dollar champion but he was the last european the last million dollar champion uh by smackdown record okay um that uh, makes more sense makes, makes yes. more, okay um so with him being mad he's angry and so uh, with there being a open challenge by our first ever throw throwback match held by val venus um you know and I guarantee he. Hello, and I guarantee he might have made some regards towards Maurice. I'm not saying that Val, that Val Venus did or not, but uh, I, I mean, how could you not, sir? He sees so, lovely yeah, lady. No, in I the... agree with you there, but it also sounds like you're stealing my storyline of. Uh, uh, oh my God! It Kate just Saban works. And Penelope Ford, just last month, in fact. Well, look at this. From a creative standpoint, Brock, I expect more from you. I hate That's everything. <laughs> I hate everything. Oh, so the Miz and Val Venus, with Val Venus being released before the Miz. Well, the, 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 the you have to say Maurice was in Playboy, so she has been naked on camera before, much like Val Venus. That is true. That is true. So maybe he's seen her work before. We don't know. Well, I'm sure he has, because I have. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, back when the Playboy, I think, was huge with the women's division. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on, bro. Christy Hammy. Molina. Like Ashley Massaro. Yep. I still have my Ashley Massaro somewhere. Yep. Unfortunately, she passed. RIP. Yep. But, uh, would, would we have seen this match back in the day if, if The Miz wrestled with Val Venus? Um, Possibly, I wouldn't say probably. So there's no, there's no definite yes involved, but uh, it's something that I could see booked. 
And if I was part of WWE creative back in the day, I would have probably booked something like this. Because mm -hmm. it's just like, you, you have to, I have to give props to you on this one. To me, that's gold. This match is gold. Listen, bro, that's, that's all I do is put gold together. It's, that, that's all I do. Yeah, sometimes it's fool's gold, though. It's <laughs> sometimes. A lot of the time. Eight times out of ten. That's it. As long as we get real gold, two times out of ten. <laughs> exactly. Still gold. <laughs> like, a broken clock is right twice a day. It's what I hear. There we go. Oh, Miz! When the alarm goes off. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Miz, there you go. Yeah, Miz is angry, bro. Seamus is not oh, yeah, here tonight. Yeah, I would be tonight. too, man, if someone was, like, macking on my lady and had, like, gone, hey, would you sign this copy of Playboy for me? Right? I mean, I don't blame him. I mean, come on now. Who could? You know? Seriously. Oh! Skull-crushing finale. What can I say? Right? Skull-crushing finale. <laughs> Might be it. Yep. The yeah, exactly what I had to Google earlier. The skull crushing finale is the move that takes it away. Yeah, I mean, he's angry, he's pissed, he is the Miz, and he is awesome. Well, I mean, Marie seems to think so. I mean, hey. Hey, if, if, if you can keep something like that happening, then you're doing something right. Yep. Yeah, and I believe that's what, yep. Former Million Dollar Champion getting redemption. But I don't think, you're, you're not getting that redemption until Sheamus comes. And then you got to challenge him. But, uh... Indeed. Again, these these throwback matches are, are going to be with non-champions. So, we'll never see what will happen between Val Venus and, uh, and uh, Sheamus and whatnot. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event of the evening. Kurt Angle has left for TNA, the Impact Zone. So we Kurt need Angle a world. Left the building. We need a world champion, and Vince wanted a beast to carry the brand. So we got a beast in Brock Lesnar, and we got the animal Dave Batista. What are you expecting from this match? Well, I expect what I always expect: greatness. But what will I receive? That's the question. You need to be honest with it here. You need to be honest with me. And this is for the big gold title. So to see Batista. Uh, well, Santino, you think about Batista. <laughs> Santino, ste one. Santino steps up. Oh, yes. Batista, please win the belt so that you can have a challenge. The Santino Marella. We got one one for that title that the people Ooh. feel. And as you can see, Brock is, Brock is rocking the attire he wore in New Japan. So hopefully this can uh, give uh, give give uh, Brock the fire to uh, take home the big old championship. He wants to give Brock the fire you feel when you drink the water in Mexico. There you go. Oh, there you go, Batista. So who are you pulling for here? Batista. Oh, I like it. I know you're pulling for Brock because you put him in all red tights. So. <laughs> Touche. Namesake and the tights. Which I have to say also, when I saw your Ging Beast character looking all Ronald McDonald-y <laughs> in wrestling tights, I was like, jeez. That's a me! Yeah, that's a me! That's a me, it's a Mali! <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember that one scene too, you're standing up at the top of the thing with your hands above your head like, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yup! <laughs> Ooh, Brock, perfect reversal. There you go. Your buddy's doing the stripper pull stuff on the flag. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, for those of you who haven't seen it, go check it out. It's funny. I laugh my ass off. <laughs> he did for once. A Brock video made Jams all laugh. It's wonderful. Well, I mean, I've laughed a few times, but that one I laughed almost the entire way through. So, oh. very, very well done, gentlemen. Uh, suspect and retro. Mm -hmm. You guys uh, amused me. Yep, it's what, it's what we do. Oh, Brock's going up. That's what you try to do, but this time you succeeded. <laughs> yeah! That's true. Oh, knee to the face. Going for that cover on Batista. Ba Batista. No, ba Batista, you must have kick out. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, a beast and an, an animal. Either one of these men would successfully hold that big old title. 
I'm very excited to see who comes out victor here tonight. They would hold it tenderly and caress it in the night. <laughs> you know, like you do with the things you love. Ooh, one count. Oh, God, a one count. We're not even close. It depends, though. I mean, one good F5 from Brock could put this away. Oh, shit. Looks like he's going for it right now. No! Boom, there it is. Just pull him further away from the ropes. Don't let him get a rope break. One, two, and three. three. Brock Lester wow. is the SmackDown in World Heavyweight Championship. In fashion, he's... I don't want to say that he's squashed Batista, but... That was pretty quick for Dave Batista to, to, to lose. And, and we're going to cut now backstage to Santino Marella. Why, Batista, we had the plans. <laughs> you screwed it all up. Batista, Santino cannot take out a monster to Brock. <laughs> Brock and Batista. Brock and, Brock and Santino. And Brock versus Santino is a crazy. Five star, five star match. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. This just in at Survivor no, Series. Get, uh, nope, nope. Versus nope, get out of here. All right, with that being said, guys, uh, with me as always is Jamsaw. Links are always in the description. With that being said, we have a new world champion. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Peace. Phenomenal. That being said, peace.